There's a solid difference between being a good trader and being a great trader and that is how you read the market structure. Hi traders, my name is Andrea and you're on the official channel of the Goat Funded Trader. I want to say welcome and feel free to subscribe and like this video and also to check the links in the description box for more information about our pro firm. We are waiting for you to join our community as we are looking for the best traders in the forex industry in order to create a win-win situation. You will receive up to 95 of the profits and you're helping us grow too. Let's go on charts. Okay, so here we are on GPPUSD. I chose this pair because I'm trading it the most. It makes most of my profits and I believe that it's a great example for what I'm explaining today, meaning the market structure. First of all, I want to mention the fact that this is exactly how I do it and you can take my explanation and adapt it to your trading plan. So first of all, I want to mention the fact that I'm a day trader. That means that my technical analysis starts from weekly, continues with daily, with four hours and then with 15 minutes. Sometimes when I'm trading XUSD pairs, I'm watching the chart on DXI2, uh, the index of dollar, because I correlate them. When DXI goes bullish, the XUSD pairs go bearish, and when the index of dollar goes bearish, the XUSD pair go bullish. It's a great thing to know, it's great to correlate them. Sometimes the correlation doesn't work, but, but most of the time it does. The next thing that I do is to keep my charts separate, the daily, the 4 hours and also the 15 minutes. Sometimes the chart can get really messy if you combine all of them in one. From time to time I go with the 4 hour chart combined with the 15 minute one for the entries because I use the daily and 4 hour for structure and 15 minute to search for entries. Also when I'm looking on 15 minutes I go down on 5 minutes and also 1 minute from time to time. So I refine it. So here we are on the daily chart and all you can see here is my marked on daily. There are no confusions, this is very clear for me. So what I want to mention is the fact that the first thing that I'm looking for is where is the break of structure on daily, where is the protected high or low, where is the weak, also where's the weak high or low. Here if I zoom out a little bit, there was a bearish trend going on for a lot of times. There was a bearish trend going on for a lot of days, but after that we had a reversal and it happened somewhere around here. As you can see, instead of the market continuing bearish, going somewhere over here and creating another bearish leg, it actually took it and changed structure from bearish to bullish. When I see this kind of movement happening, I already know that I have to mark the swing points. So I marked the daily break of structure here between you start from this week, you go to the right, make a straight line and, and usually I consider the break of structure happening when it goes from week to body or from body to body. I don't consider week to week a valid break of structure. So here we had the daily break of structure that created this protected low and this swing high and the market continued in a, in a bullish way. As you can see, we formed here a pullback movement, the market came back here, rejected it, went back into this demand area and then created another break of structure to the upside. So again, when this happens, I don't consider these swing points valid anymore. I'm looking for this structure from now on. So again, a daily break of structure to the upside from this week to this body. I marked this as a protected low and this high is weak. It was taken and you may be wondering how does this help in my day-to-day -day analysis? Well, it helps a lot because I know that the chances are pretty low for this low to be taken. So the market can go somewhere around here in this demand area to create some liquidity maybe to continue a little bit below. But most of the times it won't go lower than this high over here. We won't see this. If we if we see this, it means that something is happening on the higher time frames or that there is a reversal and we should adapt to that. But most of the times, if the low is protected, it will be respected. So this is the second thing that I'm watching, right? Then I watch a little bit what happens to the supply and demand areas. As I can see right here, if I zoom in a little bit at the structure that I'm looking for, because I'm not looking here, for example, I'm just keeping it here. As you can see, there's a demand chain holding, right? So this is what's happening here. 
But in the same time, I realized that this structure, this bullish leg holds a lot of sell side liquidity. If you remember, the market moves in waves. So we need some downtrend movement before going up. Also, I realized that GBPUSD just created a break of structure to the upside. So we need a pullback to continue the movement, right? I'm waiting for that pullback. But I know that it won't happen now just because the, this demand still holds. The first thing that I'm going to do is to look for this area to be taken and to create a change of character to the downside. If this is going to happen, it's a confirmation for me that this might be uh, the pullback movement that I'm looking for and I might search for an entry on the lower time frames. But for now, I'm not pretty sure that it's going to happen. Again, I see that this lower high was formed. It might hold, this, the, this bearish structure might hold, so I'm keeping an eye on it. But it's not the most important thing for me because I will look on lower time frames too. I will look on 4 hours and also on 15 minutes. So the technical analysis is not done. Also, I didn't finish with the daily chart. I still have things going on. All I can see is the fact that this uh, protected low was created, right? And this high because of the daily break of structure. So right now I'm going to mark the premium and discount areas. And I will explain how the premium and discount helps me. First of all, I start with the protected low. I create the zone from here and then I go up to uh, the highest price that uh, GBPUSD achieved. So this is how the premium and discount areas work. This is the premium. This is the discount. This is what I'm looking at. Right now, the market is situated in premium. So this means that I might start to look for sales. It's a great area for sales. The price is good. The price is good for me if I'm looking for a sale. Also, if the price arrives in this area, this shows me that I can look for a buy. Another confluence that I see is the fact that uh, the price is near the protected low, so I might look for a buy. This is an interesting box to look for a buy, but if the price goes here, it's even better. Same for the sales. If the price is situated somewhere over here, the price is better for a sale if the price was situated in this second box. So this is how I use the premium and discount. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I repeat, don't forget to check the link in the description box. Don't forget to try our prop firm and also to join our communities. Thank you for watching and see you next time.